this video we will discuss about certain organisms which are smaller than bacteria and certain other disease causing particles. So we will be basically talking about mycoplasma, then we will discuss about viruses, then viroids, prions and lastly we will talk about lichens and out of these only mycoplasma has been placed into kingdom monera according to five kingdom classification but other structures or other organisms which we can call like viruses or lichens they did not find any specific place in this five kingdom classification. So let us talk about this mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is the smallest living organism. It is smallest living organism. Now whenever this question is asked, we have to be very careful in reading the question because if the question says which is the smallest organism, living organism, our answer is going to be bacteria. But if they ask us which is the smallest living organism without cell wall, then our answer is going to be mycoplasma. The reason is they do not have cell wall. So they are smallest but without cell wall. And if it is a general question which is the smallest organism, then our answer is going to be bacteria. So they are smallest and without cell wall. Most of them are pathogenic, that means disease causing and they are also known as PPLO that is pleuropneumonia like organism. So mycoplasma or PPLO, this is what is the term given. They are smaller than bacteria because cell wall is not there and they are placed in kingdom monera. Now coming to the next uh, category that is of virus. Viruses, they are considered as organisms, living organisms, but they do not have any cellular organization. So we call them non-cellular living or organisms. Non-cellular organisms. That means they do not have a cell-like structure or organization. Then what exactly do they have? They have a capsid and the genetic material. The capsid is made up of proteins and this protein pieces are known as capsomeres and the arrangement of these capsomeres or proteins can be helical or it could be polyhedral. Helical means those are smaller capsomeres or pieces and they are arranged in the form of a helical structure. So if we are drawing these capsomeres, they would be arranged in this manner, helical manner. And the inner part would have the genetic material. And polyhedral means it is going to be something like this, hexagonal or polygonal capsid kind of a thing. Genetic material could be again of two types. It could be RNA or DNA. The RNA containing viruses are known as retroviruses. RNA containing virus. We have already talked of central dogma. Central dogma means DNA to mRNA. This is transcription and from here to protein synthesis, this is translation. But if some organisms have RNA as genetic material, then, then there is an additional step which has to take place. 
That means from RNA there would be DNA synthesized and then the central dogma would take place. This process DNA to mRNA is known as transcription. So the reverse process is known as reverse transcription. And for this reverse transcription there is an enzyme required. And this enzyme is known as reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase. So this is the basic structure. It is a protein capsule and then there is a genetic material. Most of the plant viruses, plant viruses are normally having RNA as genetic material and this RNA is single-stranded RNA. Animal viruses, animal viruses could have single-stranded DNA or they can have double-stranded DNA also. So both are possible. So if genetic material is there, there are certain variations. Now coming to some historical things from scientists, and their contribution when it came to this virus and term and from where was it isolated. So it is a non-cellular organism. The term virus has been derived from venom or poison and this term was given by Pasteur. One more scientist Ivanovsky was the one who actually identified some microbes from a tobacco mosaic infected plant. And he found out that this microbe was smaller than bacteria. Smaller than the bacteria. So he was the one who actually did this. Then another scientist, Bejernik, was the other one who did the similar kind of uh, experiment. He isolated fluid from a tobacco mosaic infected virus plant and injected in healthy plant. And he found that those healthy plants got infected with that disease. One more scientist that is Stanley crystallized the virus. So these are few scientists. They have played important role in this discovery of virus and finding out. But because it is a non-cellular organism, there is no place which has been allotted to it. One more very important thing about the virus. They are obligate parasites. This means they can survive only in a host cell. Can can survive in host only. And when they survive there, they are able to reproduce. So these are few special things about viruses. Now let us come to the other ones. That is viroid. Viroid is nothing but the naked genetic material. Dimer was the one who actually isolated a single-stranded circular RNA. And he found out that this was responsible for causing a disease in the tubers of uh, potatoes. So they are called viroids. Viroids means it is only naked RNA which is disease causing. Then the prions. Prions are nothing but the proteinaceous or the protein part. Protein which is infectious. 
So if we are talking in terms of the virus, this is only the protein part which is disease causing and this is only the genetic part which is disease causing and obviously if it is only one part they are going to be smaller and smaller in size. Now lichens. Lichens are symbiotic associations of two uh, components. One is the algae and other is the fungus. The algal component is known as phycobiont and the fungal is known as mycobiont. Phycobiont, they synthesize food and the fungal partner absorbs water and provides shelter. So this is the function of these two components. The association is permanent symbiotic. That means both get benefit and lichens are very sensitive to pollution. So they are used as pollution indicators, especially to sulfur dioxide, very, very sensitive to this uh, uh, type of gases in the atmosphere. So we can use them as pollution indicators. So we have talked of mycoplasma, the virus, then the third one is viroid, the fourth is prions, and fifth are the lichens. And out of these only mycoplasma uh, could be placed into kingdom Monera and all others did not find any specific place in Whittaker's classification. So we have completed kingdom Monera and certain other organisms. Now from the next part, we will take up the next kingdom, that is kingdom Protea.